Okay, this is David Mandel, and I'm back again. And uh, continuing with our video, what we're going to start talking about now are basically a few of the basic Linux commands at the command line. Um, commands like echo, ls, cat, more, and so on that hopefully you went through in your um, Unix class, and um, but we're just going to review them here. Okay, let's go up, up above here, and let's um, open a new terminal. We'll start with the new terminal session. Um, on most distributions, you'll find a terminal someplace down in the uh, menu system. Um, SUS, it's usually located right here, which is really easy to grab. As I recall, Fedora, it's a little harder to find. Um, but they all have it. And so we've got a new terminal here. First command that we type is we're always typing the ls command. ls is basically the um, directory command, which is um, um, uh, or the same as dir in Windows or DOS, which lists our files. Um, that is nice to list our files. This is our files right here. Um, um, other commands you might want to type is um, there's a command called man. Stands for manual, and that's the command we usually use for finding out help about a command. If you type in man, and then any command, well, actually, most any command, there aren't man pages on everything. But um, but there's man pages on all the common commands. And uh, it will basically give you a give you information about the uh, commands and um, um, and sometimes it's very expensive, extensive. The man on ls goes on for pages and pages and pages. So um, that um, um, tells you lots of information about man. Most people, usually, um, at least myself, and I think a lot of Unix or Linux people, do not like to memorize a lot of things. We do kind of memorize some things, but mostly we know where to find things and find them very quickly. And we depend a lot on the man commands for finding the flags you can use on various commands. Uh, two flags that work with ls that are kind of cool is one is ls minus a, which shows all files, not just the files that you see, but so-called hidden files. Let's look at this. And what we find is lots of files that begin with dot. In Unix, any file that begins with a dot is like um, Kino history. Uh, dot Kino history is a hidden file. And um, that means they, they, most of the time they don't show up unless you especially ask for them with something like the minus A flag. And these are usually configuration files or data that um, a program keeps on um, what's happening with that program that it may want to use later that um, it needs to keep. Um, but it, it really usually is just noise for the user, so it stores those as hidden files. Um, as an example of what might be in a hidden file, let's look at bash rc or bash history. Now, bash history, um, let's, let's basically, I believe the command for listing a file is cat, concatenate, as I recall, dot bash underscore history. Oh, man, that's a lot of typing. That's a pain. Oh, and then it goes off the screen. That's no good. But as it happens, there's another command called more. And that only displays a page full of uh, screen at once. And I can basically page through this a little bit at a time. This is basically a history of the commands I've typed in. 
Uh, and um, the bash shell, which we'll go into later, but the, the bash shell keeps a history of the commands that you have typed in um, so that you can reuse them. There are various shells in Linux. Um, a shell is basically a the, the first program that your command goes through, and um, it does a little bit of pre-processing on the command, like maybe expands wildcards, evaluates regular expressions, and then it passes it on to the command itself. So, um, um, and the shell that is most commonly used in Linux is called Bash, which has a lot of nice features. That's the only shell I'm going to talk about at the moment. If you use the arrow keys with bash, you can basically go back and forth between your commands. You can also fix a command by going back with the arrow keys. And um, how would we like to fix this command? We'll call it, um, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, what's the name of another command? How about VI? I don't know. Nah, VI is too complex. Um, oh, file. OK, file is a command that basically tries to tell you what type of file you're dealing with. So like bash, which we just saw listed here, is a text file. Um, file snap is a, um, these are, well, the one is a PP, PPM file. The other one is a JPEG file. They're um, uh, image files of some sort. Find ttt dot, oh, yeah, well, there. Um, the one file up here is a XML document file. ttt dot sh is a text file as is this next one down. ttt.wave is a RIF data wave audio file. Must be a sound file. And indeed, I believe it is. Um, file names can be long in Linux, up to 255 or 256 characters. I don't remember which, but the book set does. Um, they can be quite long, and they can we use suffixes. Um, unlike Windows, which generally uses, what, three character suffixes, Linux can use suffixes of any length you want. And they tend to be two, three, four characters, but um, not always. Um, you know, they can be anything you want. and. Um, they're not really enforced by the software or anything. They're more like, um, it's more like we have traditions on what suffix is used when. And um, it's not a real strong, strict enforcement. Um, now, I find that some of these file names are painfully long. The book says that most people don't use file names longer than 20 characters. I do. Um, and I think a lot of people do. Um, but the bash command line editor has wonderful things about it that help you uh, expand file names. There's something called tab completion or something of that type. So if I type an S and then I type a tab key, it expands the file name to match um, to match whatever is is is. Um, uh, whatever files will fill the ticket there as far as it can. Now, you can see up here, uh, it wasn't sure whether it should use a 9.1 or a 9.2. So it left that blank. So if I put in a 2 and then I type a tab, it fills in the whole rest of the thing. And XV is a little program that um, I, I think it's a graphical display program. Um, and um, so that's cool. Um, OK. Um, PWD is a program that says, where am I? Or it gives my current location. Um, CD is the program I use to change locations. 
um, documents. Once again, I use the tab key. LS minus L expands, uh, is, uh, gives me a listing of the files, like LS, but it expands them, giving me a lot more detail about my files, including the file length. Oh, that file is zero characters long. And um, the date of last modification, the file name, and a lot of access of information about access rights. So since that file is um, zero bytes long, if I um, send that file to the terminal, it should do that. It, yeah, not much of anything because there was nothing there. Um, to remove that file, I would type this. Remove. That gets rid of my file. Now, if I had a directory, let's make a directory. Let's go down into that. Let's make another directory. Let's go down into that. Let's make another directory. Or let's, oh, we'll just make another file. I can make another file by doing um, a cat command and redirecting the output to um, some dumb file. Of course, I misspelled the name here. But I can go back with my arrow keys and fix that. And um, this is something. Well, good enough. And um, now we see uh, that there's information in there. Let's go up a um, dot dot means parent of. So we will cd to parent of, parent of, and we're at documents. Now we have a whole um, tree here. And I'd like to delete that tree because I don't need it. So we'll remove, uh, that doesn't work. Uh, unlike um, a win DOS where our trees had to be empty to delete them, or pretty much, the remove command has some options on it. Minus R, minus F says do a recursive remove and oh, and force removal. Don't ask any questions. Don't do anything. Just do it. It's gone. This means that I can remove a lot of stuff really quickly, whole tree structures. It means I do need to be careful. Linux um, was built or Unix was built by people who believed that when you told the system to do something, the system should do it. Um, unlike other operating systems that believe that when you tell the system to do it, the user probably doesn't know what they're doing, so we'd better really ask them and make sure. Linux really has faith that um, the user knows what they're doing. So it is powerful. It can delete things really quickly. It can, you know, that's cool. But be aware of it. Also, if you don't use the graphical user interfaces, it just gets rid of things. There's no trash buckets and trash cans that you can go back and get things up from. You delete them, they're gone. Um, OK. Um, um, well, let's see. Let's go back to our outline here. Well, there's other commands here, like um, cut and paste and, and uh, things of that type. Um, some of these commands, like, ec oh, we're kind of out of time here, so let's uh, take a break. <laughs>